Hi there and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a design that I already created and we're going to be adding some interaction to it all within Figma. Uh, we're going to be using Figma's prototyping features to be able to do this. We're going to be adding in hover effects as well as a hamburger menu that can open and close. Uh, the X will cross all of that. So if this is something you'd like to see how to do, stick around. Hi there, my name is Kevin and welcome to my channel. We learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And we're continuing from that last design that we did. If you didn't see that video and you'd like to just see me build out that layout, you can go and check that one out. There should be a card popping up for that one right now. Hi there, Kevin from the future here. And I just want to apologize for the audio on this one. Um, you'll actually hear me very faintly talking in the background through parts of the video. I really don't know what happened uh, at all, to be honest, and I'm trying to figure it out. I haven't seen it in any other recordings except for this one. Something must have been playing. I didn't hear it at all. Uh, hopefully it isn't too distracting for you as you watch through this. But yeah, it was a really fun video. So I hope despite that, you can still enjoy it and learn a couple of things along the way. As I said, we're going to be looking at Figma's auto layout feature and just seeing how it works. Because honestly, if you want to share this with a client or with a developer, uh, that you're working with and you need to show the different ways that you expect things to work or you want the client to have a good idea of how everything works. It's just so nice when they can see all that interaction, all the different moving pieces before the hard work goes into actually coding it all up. Okay, so here is the design that we left off with. And what I wanna do is take this and make it interactive using the prototype tool, which means we need a whole bunch of copies pretty much of our layout here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my desktop view and we're gonna work off of this one. So I'm gonna just, I'm taking my regular move tool, but I'm making sure I'm clicking right on the word desktop to select it. And then I'm pushing alt, or if you're on a Mac, it'd be option. Um, and then you can click and copy that whole thing down. And we're gonna have two different groups in here. We're gonna have one for the navigation. So I'm gonna move this over to here. Um, and then we're gonna have a second group for the buttons uh, down at the bottom there. So this one I'm gonna grab here again actually and just move that over this is going to be our buttons and you could name your layers appropriately i'm going to skip that step for now <laughs> uh, but here we're going to have four of these guys and actually we can do one of them going this way as well um, and i just find it easier when i'm setting all this up to organize everything to make sort of trees on how everything is moving around and i'm actually going to move my base one all the way over here because i just find for organizational purposes it's a lot easier to do that and then i'm going to grab you and move him over and we'll worry about the mobile one after it's gonna be a little bit more complicated and you know what i think we could make this a little bit more interesting on the desktop view too so i'm going to take this one and make a copy and this is where we're going to start everything off um, and to do this what i'm actually going to do is take all of these i'm going to select them move them over to about here i'm going to move this one a little bit more and we'll grab these and move them even more. Now, and this is uh, similar if you don't move too far so they fall off. If you need to move them really far out, just make sure your cursor is still on the artboard because as soon as your cursor goes off the artboard, they will leave the artboard or the frame um, as they like to call it in Figma. So I'm gonna move all of them over like that. I'm gonna select everything here and we're gonna drop the opacity. And I know they don't, it would be nice if they put opacity here, um, but there's nothing listed, but I'm just gonna push zero there and bring the opacity of everything to zero. Actually, if you select everything and you push one on your keyboard, that's 10%. Zero is, um, so this is on the keypad. I don't know if it works. Oh, it works on the numbers on the top two. So you can choose your opacity. Zero is 100%, but I think if you do zero, zero, it will drop to zero. So you can do that. Uh, so you can do that to speed things up a little bit. So there it's at zero, and then here it's gonna move into place and have the color. So let's try that out. So to do it, I'm gonna come here to prototype, and I'm gonna select the whole desktop. And you see it gives me this little plus thing here and I'm just gonna click on that and drag it down onto this one. And once it snaps into place, I'm gonna let go. And it wants to know how, when is this gonna happen? So what's the event that's gonna cause it? On click, on drag, hovering, what do we need to do? In this case, we're gonna say after a delay of one millisecond. So as soon as the page loads in, we want this to happen. And what's the animation? Is it instant? If it's instant, it literally means it's just changing from this to this. So that would be if you have like a whole bunch of pages built out and when they click on to go to the about page, you want that to be instant because you want to switch to that page. In this case, I want to go and do a smart animate or you could do a dissolve, I guess, but um, I have two things happening. I have it moving and I have the opacity coming up. So if you're moving stuff around or resizing stuff, that's when you want this smart animate, which is really cool how it works. 
Um, you can choose the ease in, ease out. I'm just gonna go with an ease out over 300. And what I wanna do is see how it looks. So I'm just gonna push the little play icon here. And you see that we saw it come in. If you wanna see it again, just push R on your keyboard and you can watch it happen again. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do, let's just close this. Now, when you do this, it opens a new tab. Um, so don't close your Figma window because I do that all the time. I'm gonna close that tab and I'm actually gonna move these guys out a little bit more. I want there to be a bit more movement. And I think I might slow that animation down a little bit. So I'm clicking on the desktop just so I can select my little arrow thing here. And we can come here and maybe make it 500 milliseconds. And let's try that again. I think that looks better. The takeout's moving a little less than I'd want it to. So maybe I have to move him over. I might've missed it when I did that last one, but when it page loads, that can slide in like that. Just, you know, for fun, we're learning how this works. So. Um, but it could be an interesting thing. Let's just move that over and try one more time. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Perfect. So with that done, now we can make some more interesting things happen. Um, so this is where I have all these different states that I want to build out. So the first one is going to be for my buttons here. So let's say this button. So here's this is the default. We're going to be here. But what happens when I hover on my button? So when I hover on that button, we're gonna to go to this screen here. So I'm gonna go back to design and I'm just gonna choose this color. I'm gonna switch it to the yellow and we'll switch the text color, which is the FFF here. We'll switch that one over to my, that's not high enough contrast. <laughs> so we'll switch it over to the really dark one like that. I'm not a super fan of how that looks, um, but it should be okay. So we'll go to prototype. And now, instead of selecting the entire frame like I did last time, this time I'm going to go only on this button. And I'll take you and I'll drag it down to the screen. Smart Animate should be fine. I'm going to do like a 250 this time. I don't think we need 500. Um, I think 500 is a lot. But now I don't want it on click. I want it to be while hovering. And this is something I was worried that I'd have to make like on mouse out go back to here. But if you use the while hovering, Figma's super smart about it. So if we hit play, we're gonna go back to the start. Everything should load in. And then when I hover, I get my hover effect on my button there. I, I just think that's so much fun. <laughs> so then we can do the exact same thing for this other one. So I can take this, what happens when we hover on this one, you'd have some sort of design system or something probably, but let's just make it look exactly the same. They, uh, no, this will turn to the yellow. Actually, we wanna use my colors here. That will go to there and my text inside of it will switch to white and uh, uh, not white with the dark color there we go and then we would come up to this one and on my prototype say that we're going over to here navigate to on ho while hovering so exactly the same as we had before and now uh if we come back and usually wherever this play symbol is is if you hit play here where it starts so it loads in, that one's working, and that one's working like that. So you get this nice interactive little thing you can share with people, get feedback on it. I find it so, so cool. Super, so that's looking pretty good. Um, and now I'm gonna do the next part kind of fast because it's exactly the same thing uh, that we just did. So it just means on each one of these, I'll be changing the color. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I've set up all my links. You can see them jumping all over the place there. So if we go and hit play on here, we should have it load in. And then I can hover on there, hover on there, or I've changed the color of all of these and made the exact same thing I did on the other ones to add the hover when I hover on top of those. So I think that looks nice and cool. It's not too hard to set up, but one gotcha I wanna show you um, is make sure that your design is really finalized before you start building these links in. Because if you decide, oh, I need another screen, I forgot about one of the screens, and I want to base it on the original desktop, when you copy that over, it's keeping all of those connections in place. Um, now, you can select them individually and delete them, but I find like it ends up creating, if you need to have like an in-between state and you don't want to keep all of these other ones, I don't think these would get in the way. Um, but just in case along the way you're playing around with stuff and you need to make another copy, it can be problematic if it's keeping all of these things that you've set up. So just be careful with it. So here at mobile, 
Um, so let's move on to the phone because the phone's going to have a bit more of an interesting one here. I think it's going to be, um, there's a few extra things we want to do. So for the phone, we need to have, let's just do our, our start and end state. So when, so when we click, what's, you know, we're clicking on that. So what's the first thing that's going to happen? Obviously my menu needs to grow. Uh, let's double click to bring it. Now here's one thing that's uh, important is you see how my navigation is actually behind this text. Um, I think some problems can happen from that. So I'm actually going to delete this original one. I want to make sure that my on mobile, my main navigation is actually probably on top of everything, including that hamburger. Let's try making sure it's just on top of there. Um, I might keep the hamburger. We'll see what happens. Um, so let's just bring that. So when they, somebody clicks on this, we want this to grow out. And I think that could be okay. I can fit everything here. So that maybe the hamburger could stay on top. That could be interesting. So that's going to grow out. And I want to change this. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just move him, not off screen all the way, um, but move him pretty far this way. And on my design, I'll drop the opacity of it down to zero. So when we go from there to there, that will disappear, sort of slide out and disappear at the same time. And then here, what I'll do is I'll rotate it. And then I'm holding shift while I rotate. If you don't hold shift, it's free rotation. Whereas if you hold it, it goes in 15 degree increments. And I'll just move these up and down a little bit to try and get a perfect X. Is that perfect? I don't know. I'm sort of doing mobile first. I might have to move one of them over there. That looks a little better. So I can get my X like that. Um, and you could play with the sizes and all of that. So let's just see how that's going to look. So we're going to start here on my phone. And let's go to prototype. Um, actually, this is could be a problem because we have three different little things here. We don't want to force somebody to click on one of those little things. So what I'm going to do is push R for rectangle. I'm going to draw a big rectangle here. This is going to be my click zone. Um, so here we can choose the same color. That's my background. And I want to put this in my navigation, but after the text. So I have my logo. That navigation group is all of the text that I think I deleted. So there's nothing in there. Um, but I want my logo and then I want this big clickable area. And I'm going to use that as because that's a lot easier for somebody to see and to click on. And then when I prototype it, I can see if somebody clicks on that, we're going to go over to here. Uh, the only problem is we're going to need that here too. So that's this rectangle. I'm just going to bring it on over to here as well. Um, and in that one, make sure it's in the exact same place. As long as the layer name is the same, I'm pretty sure that we won't run into any issues um, with that, especially because we don't really see it anyway. So I don't think we'll cause any problems. Uh, but now on this one, if somebody clicks on it, we're going to, instead of having it go there, it can come and go back to this frame here. So if we click on it here, it goes to here. If we click on it here, it goes back to there. So let's see if that even works and see what that looks like. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is zoom out a little bit because I need to grab this little play button and drop it down over here, right there. Um, so that way, we'll, if not, we have no way to navigate to this. Now that my play button is there, when I click play, we should be there. And now uh, I didn't do the hover states, we're on mobile, so I'm not gonna stress about it. And you can see I get my little hand icon and if I click, there we go. So the smart animate is moving that over, it's fading it out, it's crossing those automatically and it's making this move up and down like that. So I'm going to speed that up a little bit. I think it's a little bit slow. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to click here. It's at 250. Let's try a 175. And then I'd want the same thing going back the other way. So I'll select it, 175. And let's try that again. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. You don't have to make that move. I just wanted to show you that we can do a lot of cool different things with that. You don't have to close this every time. You can click back and forth. I've always been closing it. But um, now one thing I did do, obviously, is I deleted. And this is where, remember I just said you want to be careful and not copy and paste stuff because it copies connections. So I'm just going to grab all of those and copy that. And I want to bring them back into this design, actually, paste. And I want to double check one thing really. I'm going to bring them here actually for now. And you can see they have all those connections. So maybe I shouldn't have deleted them in the first place. So just something to always uh, be aware about. I just want to delete. So I'm just going to 
click on the connection for each one and get rid of it because I don't want that hover to be there. It's going to be super weird. It's going to change screens and everything. Um, now, in this case, I don't want them like that. I want them to actually be one on top of each other. And I should have one floating around. There we go. And I'm not too worried about organizing them well because I can select them all. And I can tidy them up. And let's align them all to the left and then bring them in like that. Now, the one problem is these don't exist on this layer. So now if I go to my prototype and I go there, they're fading in, which is fine because they're going from non-existence to existence. So if you want something like that, we could be very happy with that. Um, but if we want to do something a little bit more, what we could do is actually bring these to be living on this one as well. And if they're living here as well, but once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them up a little bit and we'll drop their opacity down to zero. And what should happen is when I click that, see how they're moving down with the menu as they fade in. Uh, so just different options. If you do want to animate things, make sure they're on both layers at the same time. And so we could do something a little bit like that if we wanted to. So there we have some of the things that we can do with prototyping in Figma. We're just scratching the surface with it, but I think it is a fun exploration of some of the possibilities you can do. And of course, if you want to share this with people, whether it's a developer that you're working with or a client that you're working with, it opens up them having something they can actually interact with before the website starts getting built. So they really know everything that's going to be happening. And just even for yourself, sometimes it's nice to sort of experiment with these types of things. And the auto animate, honestly, there's you can try a whole bunch of stuff. And most of the time, it does a really, really good job. Soon I will be coding this whole thing up. So if you want to see how I manage to do that, we'll be using HTML and CSS to do it. And if you're curious how I do that and you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing to my channel. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support me and everything I do here every single month. You guys are absolutely amazing. So thank you very much. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.